Welcome back in, everybody, to Football Friday edition of Birds 365. Joined now by uh, Ed Kratz from SI.com, one of the best in the business, covering the Philadelphia Eagles. Does a great job, always does a great job here on Birds 365 with us. Ed, how you doing on this Football Friday? Good morning, guys. Happy Friday to you. Happy Friday. It's always a happy Friday when I get to see my buddy Ed Kratz. Um, I guess we'll start. Jimmy Kemsky, our, our other buddy, uh, who covers the Eagles with us, uh, did his uh, dumpster buyer series on the Eagles, which always gets a, a lot of uh, talk, and Jimmy does a good job with that, and he's very uh, funny when he does it, and it's part tongue-in-cheek. But there were some things in there that you look at and you say, yeah, yeah, this could be an issue. Um, we've talked about a bunch of them, Ed, so I'm going to talk about one I haven't talked about yet with you, and that's linebackers. And Jimmy described it, the linebackers, as always. Um, you know, this is a team that always goes cheap on linebackers, it seems. You know, the Eric Wilsons of the world, the Corey Nelsons of the world, you know, insert name, so many of them. This year, again, two low-cost veterans who maybe have a little bit more upside than usual, though. I know Ed's more high on the linebackers than me. This time, at least you have some guys who maybe have some untapped potential in Devin White and Zach Vaughn, who got most of the first team work in the offseason. Are they a little bit better at linebacker this year than typically? Well, <clears throat> maybe in the name game they are. I mean, Devin White's a big name. Um, is he still a big talent? I, I think he is, and I think you wrote about this, John, recently, is he's got that chip on his shoulder because people are kind of writing him off, and, you know, he's really rolled the dice on himself, gambling that he will have the kind of year that will lead to the big-time contract or the big-money contract over, you know, three to five years that he thinks he deserves. He thought he deserved that in Tampa Bay. He didn't get it, um, and uh, I think that led to kind of a, you know, a, his play last year, which was subpar and led to his benching. I think a lot of that had to do with his contract situation. He let it get inside his head uh, and that affected him. So, yeah, I, I am kind of high on the linebackers. I know if you're going to circle a, you know, a position group on this team, that would be the first one I would circle as far as my concern level. But I, I think Devin White is going to prove us all wrong. And uh, you know, Zach Bond, I'm kind of excited to see what he can do inside this Vic Fangio scheme. Is he the next Andrew uh, Van Ginkle? You know, we all know the love that uh, Fangio had for uh, that outside linebacker last year in Miami. I mean, maybe Zach Bond can kind of play a similar role to Van Ginkle. They used to be teammates at Wisconsin. Bond was the captain of that Badgers team. Um, so, you know, maybe he's a guy that can step up too. So I, I'm excited about the names that they have on this team, those two players in particular. Um, whether it translates on the field, we're not sure, but I think it will. I think the Eagles will be okay. Now, of course, if someone gets hurt, then you have a problem because then what do you, what depth do you have? You have Nicobe Dean who, you know, has to stay healthy. And then after that, it's Ben Van Summeren, Jeremiah Trotter, yeah, um, try. You know. I maintain that. I said before you came on, I think their depth at linebacker isn't that bad from the perspective of oh, they're all the same. In other words, if they lose a linebacker, if they lose AJ or Devante, they're screwed, you know, oh, even yeah. though, you know, Paris Campbell may be okay. Who knows what Johnny Wilson becomes? Maybe John Ross turns into something, but you can't replace people like AJ Brown. No. And Devontae Smith. If if you're starting with Devin White and Zach Bond, and then you got to go to Nicobe Dean, say, and Ben Van Sumeren, I think it's basically the same. You're going to get the same level of production. So maybe in a weird way, the depth is a little bit better than usual, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, listen, the Eagles are still trying to get it done at that position with, you know, duct tape and bailing wire. Yeah. Let's face it. You know, that's yeah. one of the positions they don't seem to invest a lot in. And, you know, the, the shame of it is, is they had a guy that they could keep here for a number of years. Ah, it drives me insane, man. I know. Every time don't we talk about regret. linebackers, it, 
comes back to TJ and, you know, he Man. was the guy and he didn't get that much to go to Chicago. The Eagles, I think, could have afforded that. Yeah. Um, but for Man. some reason, they just let him up and go. And I think it was he, PFF that they recently ranked the top linebacker groups in the NFL and Chicago was, I believe, two or three. Um, and the Eagles had him. TJ. Yeah. And the Eagles had him. Yeah. I, and that's where I... I'm glad you brought that up because that takes me to Reed Blankenship. I'm not saying Reed's TJ yet, but I, I think he's a good player, Ed. And everybody keeps talking about Justin Simmons and Eddie Jackson. The Eagles did exactly what they did with TJ Edwards. Early, they bought out his restricted free agency year. They did the same thing with Reed Blankenship. Now, they didn't keep TJ long-term. But they're, they bought out his restricted free agency year, which for Reed is next year, 2025. That indicates they believe in the player, at least in the short term. Why does everybody keep talking about Justin Simmons and Eddie Jackson? <laughs> because it's June. Because, you know, wow, yeah. wow, some Eddie platforms Jackson. need something to talk about. Yeah, there we go. It's yeah, like that's one. Probably the easiest answer. Yeah. Um, and, and Justin Simmons, because he played with Fangio and Fangio was the head and coach. so did Eddie. Eddie was a good Rock. player with Fangio. And so was Eddie. And you look at the depth at safety and it's, you know, you wonder, you know, you talk about the depth at linebacker and, and you kind of like it. Safety, it's a concern. You know, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson has got hurt these last two years. Reed Blankenship, I know he played, I think, 14 or 15 games, but he seemed to get hurt in game and, and came out of games. Um, and then, you know, Sidney Brown, you don't know what his availability is going to be. So, you know, you, you look at that group and it's like, man, you know, do they have enough there? So uh, that to me is probably why Simmons keeps coming up and um, Eddie Jackson, you know, I mean, they're talking about James Bradbury moving there. Avante Maddox can be that two for one type player. Uh, but, you know, is that kind of the answer? The Eagles seem to think to think it is right now, but you know, who knows how they'll feel in early August. Remember last August, they signed two linebackers a week or so yeah. in camp thinking, yeah. you know, we're looking around and, at our and, linebackers. And somebody and gets good. hurt, but that's what I'll say, Ed. If somebody gets hurt, it's yeah. a different conversation, CJ or Reed. Justin Simmons isn't coming up to be here to be a backup. No. And, and they wouldn't want him to be a backup because he's not going to play on special teams. So. Uh, until something like that happens and there's an injury, then yeah, if he's out there, by all means, bring him in. Um, yeah, but what happened? What if it's, there's an injury, say, in you know November, November first, one of these guys goes down, and then then what do you have? I know it's not going to be Justin Simmons, but then you have to look around and see who's out there. I mean, they were desperate at linebacker last year when they. Brought in yeah. Shaquille Leonard, you know, a, Shaq, yeah. a guy that shouldn't even have been playing with his back surgery. He just had started walking again at the end of June, a month before going to the Colts training camp. I mean, that's a guy that needed time off. But the Eagles were so desperate, they had to bring him in in week 13 because they had nobody else to play yeah. the spot. You don't want to get stuck in a position like that again at safety this year. I, I Quick yeah. thing. Sorry, Xander. But no, go ahead, Jack, Jack, but here's, here's what I'll say about Shaq Leonard. I have never met a human being who could clean things more effectively than my wife until Shaq Leonard. His his locker was pristine the moment <laughs> the season was over. Not even one speck of dust, Ed Kratz. He was out the door. Yeah. That's what he, I say about Shaq Leonard. <laughs> And then you get down the down a few stalls to Jason Kelsey. And oh, you know, he's got boxes of upon boxes stacked. <laughs> Jason gets a lot of free shit. Yeah, he, he does gets a lot, lot of free of, shit. Yeah, so you're right, though. Sha Shaq knew he wasn't coming back, and he's still not coming back. I know he's talking about trying to come back, but, you know, to me, I think retirement is, is more uh, what's going to happen with Shaq Leonard than anything else. Yeah. Ed, I want to walk you through what's going on in my head when I think about Vic Fangio in this defense, and I'm starting to wonder if collectively as a whole, not only fans, but even some reporters, even, you know, people inside the organization – or maybe putting too much stock in Vic Fangio. And it's not about Vic Fangio. On the defensive tackle room, you lose Fletcher Cox. Now you have Jordan and Jalen and, and Millen, but they were here last year as well. You could argue that's that's a negative, that's a net loss there at defensive tackle. On the edge room, 
You lose Hassan Reddick, you replace him with Bryce Huff. The rest stays the same. Okay, we'll call that an even even match. Linebacker room, you could maybe say plus one because I think they're a better core this year, even with the unproven guys and Devin White, you know, and, and Zach Bond. Safeties, I think you got a little better with CJ Gardner Johnson. Cornerbacks, a lot of unproven young guys. Like to me, the defense is it's kind of the same talent level as we had last year. And we're everybody's talking about getting to a top 15 or top 18 defense. Vic Fangio is great, but he's not playing the games. Like, is it unfair to expect this defense to elevate that much when really it kind of looks maybe the same and in some spots a little worse? I mean, I think Bryce Huff is a little worse than Hassan. I think losing Fletcher Cox is a hit. Is it fair to, you know, for us all to assume that Vic Fangio is going to have the impact to get this defense to a top 15 or top 18 defense? Well, I mean, that's what the Eagles are hoping. Um, you know, he's a veteran guy who has gotten defenses into the top 10. He had the Miami Dolphins last year in the top 10. And you look at their talent, and they they have good talent as well. It was a lot of young talent. Uh, and he was able to mold that group into a top 10 defense. So I'm not sure he's, he's overrated at this point. I mean, he needs to get to know his personnel. When we met with him in May 3rd, whatever the date was, you know, he had to pull a, <laughs> had to bring you know, out the a, a note sheet out of his back yeah. pocket when we asked yeah, him about like, the he giving me? Yeah. He's, he's Joe Biden this. Yeah, he had to bring out the roster. So, looking, yeah, I mean, linebackers. I, let me look. <laughs> Hang on a second. Who do you got? You know, as he's looking at his cheat sheet. But I, I listen. I don't think he's overrated. I think he's going to be kind of the, the the linchpin to this defense. And um, you know, he's an old school guy. And if players can take to that old school coaching, which you know, to a man this spring, they all said they could, but we'll see one, you know, right. once the, you know, what hits the fan, if they actually can, uh, can withstand the way he coaches them or stand up to the way that he coaches them. I, you know, but I think, no, I don't think he's overrated. I think this defense is really going to depend on how Fangio gets them to play and, you know, how his assistants, you know, guys like Clint Hurt and Bobby King and Christian Parker, all new guys, are able to coach up their position groups. And then he's going to have to get to know that personnel and he's going to have to figure out ways to get them to play to their strengths. And I think he's been doing this a very long time and I think he'll find a way to do it. There's no question to me, the Eagles have the talent on the defensive side of the ball. And now they need the kind of coach like Vic Fangio is to bring it all together, to identify the talent and what their strengths are. So I don't, I don't think he's overrated. I think a big key to this team is going to be how Vic Fangio gets this defense to play. Yeah, see, the yeah, big thing for me is I don't think he's overrated. I, I think I more I more disagree with you on the talent aspect. I mean, that's the first thing Vic said. You know, I need talented players. My scheme can be what it is. I need talented players, and I don't see the improvement in talent on defense on the defensive side of the ball. I know you got a lot of young guys and you drafted two corners, but they're unproven. So that's my point in that. I just I don't know how how much better he can get without the improved talent. We'll see. I guess we'll see what it is. Go ahead, Johnny. Man. You got the best roster in football. Come on, Xander. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna start getting some of my hate. Uh, well, you know. I, yeah, I, I think he I think this team did improve. I know it's unproven with Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene, but I think they will play a role. I, I think Devin White is a guy that Fig Fangio will be able to uh utilize. I think you're gonna see some sacks from Devin White. Um, I think he's an upgrade over Zach Cunningham. Um, you know, and, and Jordan Davis, another year in this defense or, you know, in this city, uh, Jalen Carter, one of the best probably defensive tackles in the league, top five anyway, um, you know, and, and Bryce Huff, a 10 and a half sack guy. I don't think he's an upgrade over Hassan Raddick either, but he's a younger version of him. Um, and he's a cheaper version. I mean, we don't even know if Reddick's going to show up for training camp at this yeah, point. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I just think the talent has been upgraded, and I know we haven't seen it from the young rookie cornerbacks. You still have Slay out there. Johnny talked about Reed Blankenship, um, you know, being kind of one of their better players. I, I agree. I think, you know, when you look at this roster, I was looking at the guys that are 25 and younger, and they have 16 guys 25 and younger. So it's a young defense. No, actually, they're not all on defense, but Reed Blankenship's 25. Jalen Carter's 23. Jordan Davis is 24. I think he'll be 25 this year. So, I mean, it's a young defense, and, yeah, you, you don't know exactly, you know, what that bar is, where they can reach. Um, but I think that, the, the you know, the, the potential is certainly there, and I think Vic will find a way to get it out of them. 
Yeah, I think the thing with Vic, you know, they're going to be taught better. They're going to be prepared better. And right there, I think you're, you're going to have an incremental improvement just from that alone. But cheap plug, Ed and I are in the middle of our annual top 25 Eagles, uh, top 25 best pure football players on the Eagles. And I think we both said, Ed, it, it was more difficult to do this year when you get to that demarcation line and we're in it you're going to see number 20 today and uh i won't give it away but it's a backup player uh, on 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 some kind of projection really more than anything else i do think it was tougher for me this year and there's not as many clear home runs and maybe from 20 to 35 it's a lot of similar and I think you found the same thing. Yeah. And I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah. I think the bottom, uh, you know, maybe from what 12 to 25, it might've been difficult, but I think the top 10 was yeah. pretty identifiable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jason Kelsey, I think was our number one best Eagle last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think I had him ranked number one. I don't know. You had you him ranked were. number one. I had AJ ranked number one. You had AJ one. So, I think this year it's a little more clear without Kelsey there, without Fletcher Cox there, uh, as to who maybe that top five, six, seven is. But, you know, it was down, like you mentioned, 15 to 35. I mean, they were all kind of like, all right, what do we do? Do we put up the dartboard and throw darts at, at these names? Um, yeah. But we did the best we could. I thought we got it right. We Our first four players, that you know, from 25 to 20. Two was it? I think the first four were cornerbacks. Corners, all corners, yeah, all corners. I mean, that. And I had to promise the... somebody. When Avante Maddox was twenty-two, and I said, "I promise a non-cornerback is coming." <laughs> and it finally, uh, Brandon Graham was twenty-one. Yeah. Um, and you know, Brandon's probably better than that, but he doesn't play a lot these days at thirty-five and. Is he 36 now? And obviously this is his final season. Um, so that factors into it as well. But, but yeah, I mean, our, if you look at our list from last year, I think we only had three cornerbacks total in the top 25. Yeah, well, they're they're much more. It, it's all projection. Let's be yeah. honest. K Kaylee Ringo started it. He was number 25. That's all projection. You know, but when I hear A.J. Brown say he's going to be a good player, that holds some weight with me. I don't know how you feel. Now, guys are in front of the camera. They're always going to laud their teammates. They're always going to laud, you know, unless you're Jalen Hurts with the head coach. You're, you're always going to laud your teammates and coaches. Um, but AJ is very honest behind the scenes, and he seems really legitimately high yeah. on Kaylee Ringo. That that holds some weight with me. Obviously, Quinion Mitchell has talent. Cooper DeGene has talent. They got a lot of talent at cornerback. Yeah. It might be, there might be some hiccups, Ed, but I'd rather have the talent and then get through the hiccups than the opposite. Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, listen, that to me is, you know, I know we have a few more weeks to talk about this before the Eagles mm -hmm. open up training camp, but that position battle at cornerback to me is going to be fun to watch how it all, you know, separates itself. Um, and it's been a long time since we've said that. I mean, uh, but this year there there's going to be some jobs that are available at that cornerback spot. And I'm not just talking about the starting role opposite Darius Slay. I mean, you're, you're going to be seeing guys battling to make this roster. Um, guys like Eli Ricks and Josh Job and Zach McPherson. I mean, where do they all shake out in this mix? So that to me is one of the biggest things I'm looking forward to at training camp. In addition to, you mentioned the backup player who is our next player that we're going to feature in our top 25 countdown. I'm excited to see if he can't take the step and become a, a starter. Yeah, and he I might be a starter. He, he might end up being a starter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I, but it's it's a good roster, but that was one of uh, Jimmy's things as well. The depth is on paper. It doesn't look quite as good. Um Except maybe at corner, um, I think they're set up well at quarterback. I think Kenny Pickett's a good backup quarterback. I really do. I think he's better than Marcus Mariota. I think they're better there. I don't think they're bad at running back. I think 
a lot of the fans disagree with me, but I think Kenny Gainwell's a solid player. Um, I think there's decent depth there. Um, getting, uh, you know, Makai Becton certainly ho- ho- helps the depth on the offensive line. Defensive front, not as strong as we're used to, but I think there's potential. You mentioned Bryce Hopp, so let's focus on Bryce Hopp. <clears throat> I got a lot of confidence in that guy. I, I don't think there's going to be any question. Like what? One of the things with Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, which I think is relevant, we're concerned about their conditioning. They have to be in better condition. With Bryce Hopp, yeah, he only played 480 snaps, I think, with the Jets last year. But I have no doubt he can play 800. That, from a conditioning standpoint, yeah, are they going to be effective? That I can't tell you. I mm-hmm. think they're going to be effective. Where are you on Bryce Hopp as far as being a big-time pass rusher on this team? Yeah, I, you know, I think the pass rush skills are there. I think that his confidence level that now that he has posted double digits and sacks, I think will be pretty high. Um, my concern with him is just against the run. You know, will he be able to, you know, set the proverbial edge that everybody talks about? You got to set the edge in the run game. Um, will he be able to hold up in the run game? Will he be able to stay on the field on first down, you know, on running downs? Will he be able to be out there? He, they be, they, you know, he better be, um, you know, you want him to be a three down player, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's what the Eagles are going to do. They're going to play him three downs. The Jets never did. And I don't think it was because they didn't think he could do it. I just think they had, you know, immense talent on that defense yeah, and they, they didn't need talent. Him yeah. To play. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think, you know, like Xander said, you know, maybe he's a little bit of a step down from Hassan Reddick, but that's what we think maybe now going into the season. But I think he can, you know, maybe be better than Hassan Reddick was. Um, we'll see. I mean, certainly they're really counting heavily on him to be the guy here over the next couple of years, um, 25, I guess he's 26. Maybe he's 25. He'll turn 26 young guy. Um, you hope that, you know, better days are ahead for him. Kind of like when the Eagles signed Josh sweat uh, years ago to an extension, they signed him on potential. And, you know, that's kind of what they did with Huff is they saw a little bit of that potential with his 10 and a half sack season last year. And, you know, they hope they get more, seasons just like that from him. I have no problem with Bryce Huff. I think he's going to be just fine in this defense. I think you're going to see him drop too. I think, you know, Fangio is going to drop oh, him. Oh, kind of right, people are going to get upset by that. We're going I know, to but he, he can do it. Have. He yeah. he can do it. He has the skill set. And you know who else can do it is Jalex Hunt. I was looking at his numbers. I mean, he had some pass breakups at Houston Christian last year. I mean, that's a guy that – I think Vic Fangio kind of wanted, really wanted to have in in his defense. Yeah, I think we, I think we talked about this at last week. Yeah, yeah. with Jalex Hunt, everybody just has put him off to the side and just says, "All right, they're going to red shirt Jalex Hunt," and that's probably what's going to happen. But why not? Maybe he's a natural. I said that last week. I mean, if you can rush the passer, you can rush the passer, and they'll find a role for you. You know, I don't expect him to be a three down player, but if he can no. get to the quarterback yeah. on third down, on right. third and long, why not? Or be a curveball in coverage. I mean, remember his career started as a safety at Brown. Yeah. The places. Cornell. 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 That's it. Yeah. Ivy. Ivy, Ivy League. League. Yeah. One of those Ivies. But uh, yeah. yeah. So he's another guy that is, is going to be an interesting watch when training camp opens. I mean, obviously you got Gene and Mitchell and they'll get all the headlines, but. I want to see how Hunt, once the pads come on, you know, all the players talk about once the pads come on, it becomes a different game. Uh, and, and, you know, he's one that I want to see how that transitions when they put the pads on. Ed, let's talk offense. What's your best case scenario offense, worst case scenario for offense? I mean, talk we're talking about talent on defense. This is not a problem for Kellen Moore. It's more the other way. I have so much talent. How do I use it all? What's your best case scenario for the offense this year? And then on the flip side, if it, if it doesn't go if it doesn't go well, what's the worst case scenario? Well, I, I think you know worst case would be you know health. If if the health doesn't hold up, I mean that's that's kind of an easy one, right? If age like John said earlier, AJ or Devontae, if they get hurt, they're in a world of trouble. Like we saw AJ go out, uh, you know, early in that Giants game last year in the Meadowlands, and 
The Eagles couldn't do anything really offensively. And then the playoff game, Devontae Smith showed up, but he was the only one. But they never developed the third guy, so they didn't have any other options. So they better do a better job of making sure that there are going to be players ready to step in should something happen to A.J. or Devontae. Um, so that probably would be the worst case if you start losing guys. Um, you know, then then you're in trouble, even at center. I mean, you're not going to have – I mean, Jason Kelsey started 156 games. Cam Jurgens, you know, let's just see if he can get through 17. Yeah. Because if he, he goes five down – five games last year. Yeah. 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 If, if he goes down, then what? I mean, you know, you have Brett Toth working as the backup. Maybe Matt Hennessy can do it. But – Max know, Sharping. He's here. Max Sharping. <laughs> He's one of your breakout guys, I think, John, yeah. right? Max Sharping. Well, uh, you know, they brought him in for a reason. I when they signed Max Sharping, because he's they signed him late. They signed him in June. Um, and we're still in June, um, before minicamp, I believe. Um he started 38 games. So there were there was a couple things about that signing that struck me as like, does that say Matt Hennessy's not healthy? Um you know, does that say they want more competition for Tyler Steen with a more legitimate guard prospect than Mackay Becton? I don't know, but it says something. The guy started 38 stinking NFL games. Yeah. I feel more comfortable with him than Brett Toth playing center. Yeah, but again, that's worst case. You know, if you have to go to one of those guys, that means Cam Jurgens is hurt. And, you know, yeah. that's a bad situation, I think, yeah. for the offense. Um, and then, you know, maybe the best case would be how quickly Jalen Hurts can pick up this new offense Kellen Moore's putting down. You know, he said 95% of it's new. We've heard other reports now that, you know, hey, he kind of overstated it. He just threw a number out there. It's not 95%. Um, you know, that was just an arbitrary number, but I, I tend to doubt it. I think he was speaking some truth there. It is, it is all new for him. Well, I think um, he was talking about the terminology. You know, yeah, whatever it is, it's new. Yeah. And, you know, he's going to have to pick it up quickly. And that would be the best case is if he picks it up quickly. Uh, it's more of his offense now, too, right? Didn't he say that, the, you know, he's, he's being able to take what he likes and yeah. build on that? I wish I wrote about that with the past. I think it's a perfect opportunity. You were never going to take it away from Jason Kelsey for obvious reasons. Um but Jason handled pass protection and, and you know, he kind of called the, the game from that perspective. And I, I've been bringing up those Tom Brady clips that were out there about, you know, sort of running a modern NFL offense. I want my quarterback to be in charge of that. And I think it's a perfect opportunity to now that Jason's gone, because Cam doesn't, you know, I think he can do it. I think he's a smart player. Everybody says he has a high football IQ. But my point is I want it in the quarterback's hands, Ed, and this is a perfect opportunity to do it. But Kellen Moore kind of hinted it was going to be Cam Jurgens. He didn't flat out said it, say it, but he foreshadowed it's going to be Cam Jurgens. I don't like that. I want, I want Tom Brady. Now, <laughs> I don't expect him to be Tom Brady, yeah. but I think you should be striving – to get as close to that as possible. Yeah. And maybe he'll take steps. I don't, you know, we'll see if Jalen can do that, but getting back to Xander's best case to me, the ultimate best case. And we talk about hurts and adjusting to this offense would be Saquon Barkley. Let's best case for me is if Saquon Barkley stays healthy, plays all 17 games, rips off five, six, seven games of over a hundred <laughs> yards rushing and contributes in the pass game and, and pushes his way towards a 1500 yard, you know, season, uh, between catching and re and running, I think that's the ultimate case. Is get well, safe one get more. To, if, if he doesn't get the fifteen hundred yards, that's a disappointment for me. Um, yeah, and I'm not even high on the guy because I know. Um, well, last year DeAndre was at eleven sixty something, and I think three hundred more in the passing game. So that's fourteen sixty right there. That's DeAndre Swift. Okay. The year before, Miles was at 1259. He had less in receiving, probably 200. So he was at 1450. Yeah. 
So he so, better be at fifteen hundred. All right, let me reevaluate that. Yeah. Then. Let's say eighteen hundred. Let's yeah. say two thousand. Right. Let's see go. if he can get to a two thousand. Well, if he can get to two thousand from line of you're, scrimmage, I mean that to okay. me is the ultimate best case. If Saquon Barkley comes in and is able to take some of the pressure off Jalen Hurts uh, and that pass game, and is able to be used in the pass game more so than we've seen, you know, in years past in this offense then to me, that's the best case. And the Eagles will be well on their way to, you know, the NFC championship game. You know, I don't even care about the numbers really for Saquon. I care about the situational impact. impact. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think he can really provide this team something that they didn't have, especially, you know, late in games when, when you have a lead and you got to close it out or even just, you know, early setting up the, you know, setting up the pass if they're struggling coming out of the gate and they don't, you don't want to come out and have three and outs. You know what I mean? Like that, that made life harder on the defense. So the situational impact for me is much more important than 1500 or 1800 yards. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, either way, it doesn't matter. Good me. point. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 everybody talks about that third receiver. The Eagles haven't been able to find a third receiver last year. It was Alameda Zacchaeus and uh, uh, Julio Jones. Who's the third one? I'm forgetting. Oh, Quez. Uh, Quez oh, yeah. Watkins. Yeah. Um, this year, it's, you know, maybe it's Paris Campbell. Maybe it's Sean Ross. Maybe. But it, it, Nick went through that convoluted explanation, if you remember, in the yeah. offseason, Ed, about, well, maybe it's Dallas Goddard. Maybe it's, and Dallas is the third receiver. Maybe it's Saquon. Maybe it's. Maybe it's one of the third receiver guys. You know, whomever fills that spot, they're not getting a lot of targets because AJ, if AJ and DeMonte are healthy, you'd be an idiot not to give them most of the traffic. So to me, it's about what Xander said. It's about impact. Are you going to make the play when the play is there? Right. Too often, Quez Watkins didn't make the play. No. Um, when Saquon gets an opportunity to make that wheel route catch, is he going to make the play? And if he does that, I think then maybe you start cooking with gas. But, you know, it's A.J. and DeMonte's offense. And it should be, by the way. It should be. Yeah. 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 Uh, again, Saquon's here to excel in the situations, like Xander said. And to make the play that when it comes to him, he makes it. But I think he's going to be used more than we think at this point. I really do. I think, you know, they want to take some of the pressure off of that passing game with a, a Jalen Hurts. Well, running the football, yeah. Yeah, running for sure. I think they're going to use him quite a bit. And it's like Brandon Graham, I think, said, once you give him a little crack of daylight, I mean, that guy's a home run hitter. You know, he can go a long way. And he should see some open lanes in this offense, the way it's operated, the yeah. way the offensive line oh, plays. Yeah. All we do is talk about the skill position guys, but the offensive line makes it all run. Yes. Those guys are the most important part. And Lane Johnson's still really good. Jordan Mailata's really good. Landon Dickerson's really good. I get no even worry. I don't know if you get this feeling, Ed. Nobody's even worried about Cam Jurgens at center. I'm not saying he's going to be Jason Kelsey, but they know he's going to be good. Nobody's yep. even worried about Cam Jurgens. And so it's Tyler Steen. Can he handle the job? If not, is it going to be Makai Becton or somebody else? Um, still a really good offensive line. Max so Sharping. Was Max Sharping, yeah. John. <laughs> Max, Max Sharping. Yeah. Max no, Sharping. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little worried about Cam. I'll be honest. I'm worried about you. the non physical stuff, right? Like, I think he's going to be great physically. I'm curious to see how he picks up the other stuff Kelsey did. And then, John, to your point, like the pre-snap reads and stuff, you say you want that to be on Jalen. Yeah. You keep saying it's going to be on Cam. Like, what does that dynamic look like? It's a different guy for Jalen. Is he trying to do more? Can can Cam do it at the level that Jason did? That's I'm more concerned with that. And it's not even a concern. It's just kind of a that's what I'm looking out for. But physically, I feel pretty dang good about Cam Jurgens. Yeah. yeah. It's just going to be very weird looking out there. Well, and yeah. Seeing Cam Jurgens at center, no Kelsey. We've seen yeah. it for 156 straight games. Yeah. We saw it for 12 years. Yeah. It's going to be really weird to see that, <laughs> and even weirder in in the locker room when we don't see Kelsey. You know, talking in the back of the locker room. You know, Cam Jurgens is now in his locker, and yeah, uh, I don't know. I have some concerns. I do. I mean, uh -huh. I know this is what is well. Third I, year. I same thing with AJ with when I was talking about Kaylee Ringo. 
Stoutland, you know, he tempered. He said, last year I had concerns with him moving a right guard. He, he basically said, I know he can play center. Um, that that carries some weight with me. With yeah. Stoutland. Yeah. Stoutland's honest. I, I always go back to Jordan's first start. He was very honest. He's like, I hope he's ready. I don't know. He <laughs> said, I don't know. With yeah. Jurgens, he said flat out, Ed, I know he can play center. Yeah. So that that holds some weight with me. Yeah. Does it hold weight that he compared Steen to Brandon Brooks a little bit too? I mean, that to me was seemed like wow, that that was very uncharacteristic. That did not, for... that did, I I prefer to ignore that one. That's too. Much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how honest he was with that one, but that's uh, too much. That's too yeah, much. I thought so too. But yeah. uh, but I hear what you're saying. I mean, he's give ultimate confidence in Cam Jurgens, and I like that Ed point out my hypocrisy. Yeah. <laughs> It was too easy. It was an, it was a low low lying fruit, John. Uh, yeah, low lying <laughs> fruit. Well done, well done. Ed, thanks for joining the show, man. Great as always. Make sure everybody follows Ed on Twitter and read all his work at si.com. One of the best in the business covering the Eagles. Ed, thank you, man. Oh, thanks, Andrew. All right, yeah, uh, guys, have a great weekend. Thanks, yeah, bud. you too, Ed. There's Ed Kratz joining us on Birds 365. One of my favorite guests. Always brings a good comedic relief, lighthearted, good opinions. Um, and and he's and he's obviously very intelligent. Knows a lot about the team. Knows a lot about football. Uh, really good stuff from Ed Kratz. Johnny Mac, just a couple minutes left to play here. Uh, we'll skip out on the final break. It's Friday, June 28th. Any any weekend plans for you, Johnny Mac? Anything on the agenda for Johnny Mac? You feel like? Ah. Uh... Yeah, uh, it's good. For, I was, I, I, I may go down to uh, uh, Milton Williams is having a uh, youth football camp in South oh, nice. Jersey uh, this afternoon. Uh, Devontae Smith's having this celebrity softball game up in Allentown. That I will not be going. There's not enough media yeah. to make that trek, uh, media availability. But uh, guys are doing some things. Uh, I may stop. But down there, my wife's sick though, so that's complicating things. So, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. I'll send prayers up for your wife. Hopefully, she uh, feels better. Good shows this week, Johnny Mac. Feeling any different on this Friday than you were on Monday going into the year? We had a lot of good conversation this week. We, I mean, we talked about smiles. We talked about all smiles. sorts of stuff this yeah. week. Uh, feeling any yeah. different about the Eagles' season after after the week this week? No, I mean nothing's going on this week as far as the actual game. I, you know, I don't. I don't give my. I've been pretty honest about my Jalen Hurts. Uh, I don't. I don't want him to change his personality. Um, I think it's one of those things where, you know, he did a bad job handling a a simple question in a press conference, and, and you can move on from there. Hopefully, he learns from it. Um, make the layup when the layup is there. But yeah, I think people have taken it to a ludicrous degree. And I think that's Jaws and Jaws, obviously, I mean, you know, Jaws is very close to the organization. They ask his input when they're talking about head coaches and things yeah. like that. So I do take some, um, you know, stuff when he talks about, you know, people in the organization believing that, but I think people in the organization are wrong if they believe that. I mean, you you don't want people changing their personality. Certainly you look, you come off as phony. Everybody can't be Brandon Graham. I mean, that's Brandon Graham. You can't point at Brandon and say, be like Brandon. It doesn't work that way. So, you know, Cody, there's 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 a wide berth there. Could he handle a simple question better? Yes. Should he act like somebody he's not? No. There's a wide berth there. I agree with that. Good week of shows, everybody. I want to thank everybody for being here. 61 likes right now, guys. Let's try and get those likes up if you are on here watching. And I appreciate each and every one of you Niners all day is even in here. Our resident 49er fan, somebody I'm I'm appreciative. A lot of live of. viewers. We should have more uh favorites than uh baby, you know. Yeah, a lot of them coming from other platforms. You know, still good number on YouTube, but everybody liked the show on YouTube. Um appreciate everybody being here. Niners all day, as I mentioned, our resident Niner fan, James Jones, our resident commander fan. I keep saying it. We got a commander fan, we got a cowboy fan every every once in a while, a couple of them check in. We got a I don't think there's any fans. Giants fans left. Uh, there might not be any left, Johnny. Man. I mean, it, it, most of the fans well, find the Eagles their, their best players, though. 
which is actually factually. Yeah, incorrect. maybe they're just hiding right now. Maybe they're they just not hiding. Dexter Lawrence, that's the Giants' best player, but they yeah. did not take.